Luke 19.10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. Luke 19.10. Came to seek and to save that was that which was lost. Well, what is the that which was lost? Again, this is not a universal passage. I don't understand why she thinks it is. This is just saying why Jesus came. Yeah, he came to seek that which was lost. Well, what is the that which was lost? Well, specifically here, let's go ahead and start in uh, chapter 19, verse 1. He, meaning Jesus, entered Jericho and was passing through, and there was a man called by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was and was unable because of the crowd, for he was small in stature. Zacchaeus was a wee little man. A wee little man was, hey, you guys remember that? Flannel boards? Anyways. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree in order to see him, for he was about to pass through that way. Jesus came to that place. He looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Talking about Zacchaeus. And he hurried and came down and received him gladly. When they saw, they all began to grumble, saying, He has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. Zacchaeus stopped and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, half of my possessions I will give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I will give back four times as much. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, Zacchaeus's house, because he, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So is this talking about every single human being? Well, no. How do we know? Well, the verse right before that, salvation has come to this house, specifically Zacchaeus's house. So this isn't a universal passage about everybody can be saved. This is specifically talking about Zacchaeus. Now, you could extrapolate this to obviously he did come to save other people that were lost, but this doesn't mean there's a provision provided for everyone. So this verse, again, doesn't help her cause, I don't think. John one twenty nine. The next day, he, John the Baptist, saw Jesus coming to him, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Okay, so John one twenty nine again, just reading a single verse. And uh, I think this is a part where I would have to ask her and people who are provisionists why they're not universalists. Because if she is going to say that this passage means the whole world, then she would have to either be a universalist or be reformed. And I'll tell you why. So let's read. Now let's back up verse uh, 23. Now this is John the Baptist speaking. He said, I am a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him and said to him, Why then are you baptizing, if you are not the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize in water, but among you stands one whom you do not know. It is he who comes after me, the thong of whose sandal I am not worthy to untie. These things took place in Bethany, beyond the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The next day he saw Jesus to him, he saw Jesus coming to him, said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is he on behalf of whom I said after me comes a man who has a higher rank than I, for he existed before me. I did not recognize him, but so that he might be manifested to Israel, I came baptizing in water. John testified, saying, I have seen the Spirit descending as a dove out of heaven, and he remained upon him. I did not recognize him, but he who sent me to baptize in water said to me, He upon whom you see the Spirit descending and remaining upon him, this is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit. I myself have seen and have testified that this is the Son of God. So if you're going to say that in verse 29, because obviously verse 33 comes after 29, that this all goes together. So if he's taking away the sins of the entire world, verse 29 is being applied to every single person, then verse 33 has to be applied to every single person, right? Because he's baptizing with the Holy Spirit. If he's taking away the sins of the whole world, then that means everybody in the world is being baptized with the Holy Spirit because their sins are being taken away. Therefore. You have to be a universalist. So this provision thing, I don't know why you would say, well, no, no, no. That, then this doesn't mean he's going to save everybody. It just means he's taking away the sins of the whole world, but that, you know, not everybody's going to give up their sins. Well, that's not what the text says. That's what you're saying it says, but it doesn't actually saying that. So you either have to be a universalist or you have to be reformed on this passage, I think, at least in the way that she's using it. So I think she's using this one incorrectly. John three sixteen through 17. This is Jesus in the night talking to Nicodemus, a Pharisee who was obviously so frightened to go against his belief system that he was seeking truth, that he's sneaking around in the night, okay, to go get the answers from the man himself. And this is what Jesus tells 
Nicodemus in the night, okay? No one, I'm sorry, verse 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. Okay, so John 3.16, obviously a very common passage that is quoted. And I'm uh, honestly, at this point, I'm surprised that people keep quoting this as if it supports their position, because this has been so thoroughly debunked, at least in the way that they use it, uh, because a simple reading of the Greek, and we're going to go ahead and do Greek on the board. I put the board in here so we can do a little bit of teaching. Um, it's just been debunked beyond uh, all recognition, uh, quite honestly. Now, we're going to read it in the English real quick. Uh, we're going to read more verses than she did. But then we're going to look at the Greek and we're going to show you that it's not whoever believes in him. And even if it was translated directly as whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life or the good old KJV, that just means that whoever believes in him. Well, who is the whoever? Well, then you can get into the whoever is. But let's go ahead and read it and then we'll do the Greek on the board and we'll show how you're actually supposed to translate it. Starting in verse 1. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you have come from God as a teacher, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's obviously a direct reference to being born again in the spirit, right? Re regeneration, renewed, you leave the old flesh behind. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? He cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born, can he? Now let's just... Stop and say that we know Nicodemus actually knows this isn't true, but he understands what Jesus is doing, that he's speaking to him in parables and wordplay. So he's just going along with it to get answers, but he doesn't actually think Jesus is being literal here. Jesus answered, truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that's what is that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be amazed that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes. And you hear the sound of it, but do not know where it comes from and where it is going. So is everyone who is born of the Spirit. Now, this is pretty interesting because, obviously, pneumatos means spirit, but it also means wind. Let me take a look at the Greek, right? And so he even uses the same word. So we translate it, the wind blows where it wishes. But obviously, or actually it says in the Greek, ta pneuma, hapu, thele, uh, pene. It's fun to say. So ta numen, the Spirit blows where it wishes you hear the sound but you do not know where it comes from and where it is going Hustos esten pasa gagene menos ectu numantos using the same word so the spirit or uh, sorry so the spirit like i said just earlier in the verse blows where it goes blows where it wants to you don't know where it's going you don't know where it's coming from you don't know who it's going to so is everyone who is born of the spirit the numantos so again earlier in this verse i think this even in verse 8 is reminiscent and supportive of Reformed theology. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said to him, Are you the teacher of Israel and do not understand these things? Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and testify of what we have seen, and you do not accept our testimony. If I told you earthly things and you do not believe in, how will you believe me if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven, but he who has descended from heaven. Son of man, as Moses had lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so, uh, must the Son of Man be lifted up, a little bit of typology, type and shadow, uh, pointing forward, so that whoever believes will in him have eternal life. That's interesting. The NASB, they translated it a little different than that. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him shall not pass, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So, he who believes, well, he who is the he? Well, John 3, 16. Let's look at this in the Greek. I'll put it up on the board, and we'll move the uh, camera a little bit closer here in a second. Okay, now I'm going to try to keep my big old fat head out of here. And again, I apologize for the glare. Like I said, I think in my last video, I've moved out to the new studio slash shed. And it's going to take me a while to get it up to par, but we're going to go ahead and look at this. And maybe I'll mirror this backwards so you can see it. Because it looks backwards to me, but that's because I'm looking at the camera. Anyways. So we're going to go through it. So verse 16, right? God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. Well, this must be a provisionist passage. Well, not quite. So in the Greek, it's kina, and this is a, right here is called a rough breathing mark, which just means you give it a sound. So hina, pos, meaning all, 
And if you were to uh, parse this out in Greek, you would take it like this, and you would go through the Greek parsing, which I haven't done in a while, so now you're going to waste your time. But the direct translation of ha pistuon, so direct article, the pistuon, plural, means the ones who are believing. Pistuo, coming from the uh, root word pistis, which means faith, believing, right? So the ones who are faithing, and then the end here is the plural, letting you know that it's that it's a plural. So the ones who are faithing or believing, ice into him, Jesus, may, this is a negation, may not perish, Allah is, but rather, a K, uh, meaning have, may have, zoane, um, life, aeonion, eternal. So the direct translation, and the reason we don't direct, translate it directly is because obviously it, it sounds weird, and when you're translating it in any, any language, you have to make concessions, you have to change things in order to make it flow well. So the direct translation is, Kina, in order that pas hapestuon, all the ones who are believing, ice autan into him, may, negation, not, or no, may not perish, Allah, but rather, eke, have, zoane, life, aeonion, eternal. So it's not whoever believes in him. It's not an open invitation to every human being. It's saying the ones who are believing, present tense, will have eternal life. So this passage, like I say, I don't know why provisionists keep breaking or bringing it up because they don't parse it out in the Greek because it doesn't say in the Greek what they want it to say. It actually says the exact opposite. So we've dealt with that one. John six thirty three. For the bread of God is that which comes down out of heaven and gives life to the world. John 6, 51. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. Okay, John six thirty three. Now she mentions that. Now, like I said, I have an entire video about John chapter 6. You can watch it. And like I said, I'll put it up here or here. I think I already put it up earlier. Anyway, it's just YouTube it. And I went through the entire chapter, and this is definitely not a section of scripture that provisionists want to try to use to prove their position, because it is so painfully obvious in this passage of scripture that no one can come to the Father unless they are drawn by the Father. It is limited by the people that Jesus want in his kingdom. And I would just suggest going and watching that entire video. Uh, maybe I'll mention it here in a little bit again some more. But you can look over that, because her utilization of this verse, this single verse in this massive section of scripture, an extremely important section of scripture. Wow, she takes out of context, but we're going to comment more on that in a minute. John 8, 12. Then Jesus again spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Okay, John chapter 8, verse 12, and Jesus again spoke to them, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. So who has the light? Well, not the entire world, obviously, just those who follow him. So Pharisees said to him, you are testifying about yourself. Your testimony is not true. Jesus answered and said to them, even if I testify about myself, my testimony is true, for I know where I came from or where I am going. But you do not know where I come from or from or where I am going. The interesting thing is that Jesus says over and over that they don't know where he, who he is or what he's talking about, just that camera, and that it doesn't matter if he does tell them everything that they need to know, all the information gives them everything. They still don't believe. Why? Well, we're going to find out at the end, but I'll go ahead and spoil it for you. It's because they were not given to him by the Father. That's why they don't believe. You judge according to the flesh. I am not judging anyone. Well, see, if you just went to verse 15 like she's been doing, oh, see, Jesus doesn't judge anyone. Right? Universalism. It's a problem with uh, picking single verses. But even if I do judge, my judgment is true, for I am not alone in it, but I am the Father who sent me. Even in your law it has been written that the testimony of two men is true. I am he who testifies about myself, and the Father who sent me testifies about me. So they were saying to him, Where is your Father? Jesus answered, You know neither me nor my Father. If you knew me, you would know my Father also. These words he spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple, and no one sees them, because his hour had not yet come again. God's sovereignty, his hour had not yet come because he planned it, he predestined it. They don't have the ability to do what they want. 
God chose the hour that he would die, very specifically. So we see God's sovereignty working here even in this passage. And he said again to them, I will go away, you will seek me, and will die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. Interesting. So even if they seek him, supposedly, they can't be saved. They'll die in their sins. Interesting. So if they were seeking him, and a provision was made for all men, shouldn't they be able to be saved then? So the Jews were saying, surely he will not kill himself, and he, and uh, blit, surely he will not kill himself, will he? Since he says, where I am going, you cannot come. And he was saying to them, you are from below, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore I said to you, you will die in your sins, for unless you believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. But he said earlier, they won't believe, they don't have the ability. So they were saying to him, who are you? Jesus said to them, what have I been saying to you from the beginning? Like, how many times do I have to say this? Shouldn't you already know? I've already told you. I've given you all the information. You have every option and every possible outlet to believe, but you can't for some reason. I have many, have many things to speak and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true. The things which I heard from him, these I speak to the world, they did not realize that he had been speaking to them about the Father. So Jesus said, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he. And I do nothing on my own initiative, but I speak these things as the Father taught me. He who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do the things that are pleasing to him. As he spoke these things, many came to believe in him. So Jesus was saying to those Jews who had believed him, if you continue in my word, then you are truly my disciples. If you truly are then you are truly disciples of mine, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Well, the truth will make free who? His disciples. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants and have never yet been a slave to anyone. How is it that you will say you will become free? Jesus answered them, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is the slave of sin. The slave does not remain in the house forever. The son does remain forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. If the son does it. I know that you are Abraham's descendants, yet you seek to kill me because my word has no place in you. I speak these things which I have seen with my father, therefore you also do the things from which you heard from your father, the devil. So Jesus is saying, yet yeah, your father is the devil, you won't be saved, you're a slave to sin. They answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you are Abraham's children, do the deeds of Abraham. But as it is, you are seeking to kill me, a man who has told you the truth which I heard from God. This Abraham did not do. You are doing the deeds of your father. They said to him, We were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I proceeded forth and have come from God, for I have not even come on my own initiative. But he sent me. Why do you not understand what I am saying to you? Is it because you cannot hear my word? So Jesus is even saying to them, Why can't you understand this? I'm speaking plainly. I've already told you the truth. You should be able to understand this, but you can't. And he's already said why. Why? Verse 44, you are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature, for he is a liar and the father of lies. But because I speak truth, you do not believe me. Which one of you convicts me of sin? If I speak truth, why do you not believe me? He who is of God hears the words of God. For this reason, you do not hear them because you are not of God. So he's speaking, and from the provisionist point of view, and from Miss Elena L's point of view, he's giving them everything they have. They have the same provision as everyone else, and God is saying, Jesus is saying directly to them, you don't hear and you don't understand because you do not have the ability to, because you have not been given to me from the Father. Back in John chapter 6, we just saw that. If you go watch my full video, you'll see why. Let's read it a little bit more. Jesus answered and said to him, or the Jews answered and said to him, Do we not say rightly that you are a Samaritan and have a demon? Jesus answered, I do not have a demon, but I honor my father and you dishonor me. But I do not seek my glory. There is one who seeks and judges. Truly, truly, I say to you, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. So I think it's pretty conclusive in that, that if you don't just yank a single verse out of an entire massive chapter of super important scripture and dialogue, you'll see pretty plainly, that people don't come to the Father or to Jesus to be saved because they don't have the ability to. We just read it. We read a massive part of Scripture, or massive chunk of Scripture there. And John chapter 6 says almost the exact same thing. Jesus, it's almost as if he's being consistent and mirroring himself in these preceding chapters. So we're going to listen just a little bit further here, and then I think we'll go ahead and wrap this thing up. What's up, through This is Ben, and welcome to part one or two or three, I'm not sure exactly which part you're watching. Uh, I apologize 
this Elena L final response video, I actually tried to upload it several times, but uh, if you've watched me in the past and you will understand why I don't do a lot of live videos because my internet is so slow that it doesn't work right and I tried to upload this video in its entirety uh, several times today. I even took it to work and tried to upload it there but it would only upload 27 minutes uh, at a time for some reason so I apologize if this is broken into parts. So I'm going to upload this probably in four different parts um, and so this was originally one big video but now I had to break it down into a couple of smaller videos because I'm kind of held back by technological technical issues. So I hope you enjoyed this and stay tuned for part two, three, or four, whichever part this is. I'll put this at the end of each video so that you know if you're watching a section of it. What happened to the other part? Well, it, the rest of them will be down there so you can watch the rest of them. Thanks for stopping by, guys. We'll see you in the next one. Take care.